हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज प्रतिमा फ्रॉम प्लानट फिजोलॉजी इन प्रीवियस पार्ट वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट वेरियस ट्रांसपोर्ट प्रोटीन्स इन डिटेल एंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट मेकेनिजम्स दैट कॉज मूवमेंट ऑफ सब्सटेंसेस अक्रॉस द सेल मेम ब्रेन द लिंक फॉर बोथ दिस पार्ट इज प्रोवाइडेड इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स बिलो सो एज वी हैव स्टडीड इन प्रीवियस सेशन पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट अक्रॉस द सेल मेम ब्रेन इज अलॉन्ग द ग्रेडियंट that is from higher concentration to lower concentration or it can be along the pressure or electrical gradient as well because it is along the gradient it does not require any chemical energy just the inherent kinetic energy of the molecule is sufficient to move the substances along their gradient passive transport is of two types diffusion and osmosis Diffusion is a term used for transport of solutes while osmosis is the term for transport of solvent. Today we shall study only diffusion part of passive transport. Okay, let us start with the definition of diffusion. Diffusion is defined as movement of substance from its higher concentration to lower concentration or in other words diffusion is the movement of substance along the gradient now the process of diffusion continues till the equilibrium is reached once the equilibrium is reached there is no net movement of the substance now even though diffusion can take place in any medium here we shall be concentrating mainly on diffusion across the cell membrane so it can be of two types simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion for simple diffusion carrier protein is not required but facilitated diffusion occurs with the help of carrier protein simple diffusion can take place either directly through the cell membrane or it can be with the help of various channel proteins so let us start with a simple diffusion through cell membrane here is a simple animation to explain diffusion directly through the cell membrane this is lipid bilayer shown above is the extracellular fluid side and this is intracellular fluid side of the cell by convention extracellular fluid is always shown on the upper side of the cell membrane and intracellular fluid on the lower side of the cell membrane these are the channel proteins shown in red color are oxygen molecules which are in, in more concentration in the extracellular fluid and shown in blue color are the carbon dioxide molecules which are in higher concentration in the intracellular fluid as you can observe these gases dissolve in the lipid bilayer and move to the other side along their concentration gradient so oxygen molecules are entering the cell and carbon dioxide molecules are leaving the cells they do not need help of channel proteins or the membrane proteins now let us study diffusion through channels first is through leak channels leak channels are watery spaces in the membrane proteins but still they can be selective in nature due to specific lumen diameter also some leak channels possess charge on it which further adds selectivity to them for example sodium leak channels have diameter of about 0.3 to 0.5 nanometers and possess negative charge towards their extracellular fluid side hence they allow only hydrated sodium ions to pass through in contrast potassium leak channels are smaller in diameter and do not possess any charge they favor potassium ions let's understand this concept with the help of simple animation sodium concentration is more in extracellular fluid side and hence they pass through the sodium leak channels and enter the cell inward movement of substance is called as influx so this is sodium influx through sodium leak channels another channel shown here is potassium leak channel due to its smaller diameter it allows only potassium ions to pass through hence potassium ions leave the cell along their concentration gradient through this potassium leak channels when substance leaves the cell the process is called as efflux 
normally cell has more number of potassium leak channels than sodium leak channels hence membrane permeability is more for potassium at rest these leak channels play important role in generation of resting membrane potential now let us study role of gated channels in simple diffusion as we have studied in the video on transport proteins gates can open or close in response to specific stimuli here we shall study some important gated channels first is voltage gated channels as name suggest gates of these channels open or close due to changes in the voltage across the cell membrane that is changes in the resting membrane potential examples include voltage gated sodium channels and voltage gated potassium channels there are also voltage gated calcium channels these types of channels are mainly found in excitable tissues like nerves and muscles and they play important role in generation of action potential as well as release of neurotransmitter from the nerve terminals as you can note in this diagrammatic representation voltage gated sodium channels have two gates there is activation gate on extracellular fluid side and it is in closed state at resting membrane potential second gate is inactivation gate towards the intracellular fluid side and it is open at rest in case of voltage gated potassium channel there is only activation gate on the intracellular fluid side it is in closed state at resting membrane potential let us understand working of these channels with the help of animation so here is a cell at rest which has negative charge inside and positive charge outside at this resting potential voltage gated sodium channels are in resting state in response to change in the membrane potential towards positive side this channel is activated that is activation gate opens immediately sodium influx begins and moves membrane potential towards the positive side the same change that has opened the activation gate also causes closure of inactivation gate but it is slow to respond closure of inactivation gate stops sodium influx and channel is said to be inactivated thus sodium diffusion occurs through the voltage gated sodium channels only when the channel is in its activation state which lasts only for a fraction of a second voltage gated potassium channels are also activated due to the same change in the voltage which has activated voltage gated sodium channels on activation these channels allow efflux of potassium but these gates are also slow to activate so this is the essential information about voltage gated channels and their role in diffusion if you are interested to know more about the voltage gated sodium channels now this part is for you voltage gated sodium channels are made up of two subunits alpha and beta alpha subunit forms ion conducting pore transmembrane part of this protein has four groups of six units every fourth unit of each group acts as voltage sensor it is shown in green color in this picture beta subunit of the protein modulates gating mechanism and also acts as cell adhesion molecule based on their location and gating properties voltage gated sodium channels are further subclassified into nine types and they are known as nav 1.1 nav 1.2 and so on till nav 1.9 tetrodotoxin a toxin from puffer fish is known voltage gated sodium channel blocker but now it is shown that nav 1.5 1.8 and 1.9 are resistant to tetrodotoxin channelopathy is associated with voltage gated sodium channels lead to various disorders like epilepsy myotonia long qt syndrome so on so that was the applied aspect related with voltage gated sodium channels okay let us resume back to our main topic diffusion now we shall study about diffusion through ligand gated channels 
ligand is nothing but a chemical that binds to a channel causing it to open or close a very common example is acetylcholine gated cation channel their lumen diameter is 0.65 nanometer and these channels also possess negative charge when acetylcholine binds to them they open and allow diffusion of mainly sodium but also calcium into the cell these channels are found on motor end plate and play important role in neuromuscular transmission process here is an animation to understand working of ligand gated channels in this example ligand is acetylcholine so shown here is acetylcholine molecule so acetylcholine binds to its receptor channels open and there is sodium influx as long as ligand is attached to the channel channel remains open and allows sodium influx once ligand is removed channel closes and stops sodium influx so these were some important types of channels helping in diffusion of solutes it will be nice to know about some other types of gated channels so here is the table showing other gated channels cyclic nucleotide gated channels like hyperpolarization induced cyclic nucleotide gated channel hcn these are found in sa node and are responsible for sodium influx leading to generation of pacemaker potential then stretch sensitive calcium channels commonly found in smooth muscles and they cause sodium influx leading to muscle contraction next are mechanically gated channels like rhinodin receptors in cisterns of skeletal muscle they release calcium in muscle and play important role in excitation contraction coupling chemical gated channels like oxygen sensitive potassium channels are found in lungs and are concerned with hypoxia induced vasoconstriction in kidneys they cause release of erythropoietin atp sensitive potassium channels are responsible for hypoxia induced vasodilatation in systemic circulation so here we completed about types of simple diffusion now let us study factors affecting it first is the membrane permeability diffusion is directly proportional to the membrane permeability more the permeability of the membrane for a particular substance more is the rate of diffusion permeability in turn is directly proportional to the lipid solubility of the substance number of channels available in a per unit area of the membrane and body temperature membrane permeability is inversely proportional to the thickness of the membrane and square root of the molecular weight of the substance second factor that affects diffusion is area of the cell membrane available for diffusion more the area more is the rate of diffusion the total permeability of the cell membrane for a particular substance is decided by the product of membrane permeability and available surface area for diffusion this is called as diffusion coefficient and it is denoted by capital d so here is a formula diffusion coefficient is equal to membrane permeability multiplied by total area of the membrane third factor that regulates or that affects rate of diffusion is concentration gradient so net rate of diffusion is proportional to the product of diffusion coefficient and the concentration gradient of the substance apart from this rate of diffusion is also affected by the charge on the molecule interior of the cell has negative charge and hence it repels negatively charged ions and attracts cations all these important factors affecting diffusion can be expressed together as fick's law of diffusion it states that net rate of diffusion is directly proportional to the concentration gradient surface area of the membrane and the lipid solubility of the substance and it is inversely related to the membrane thickness and the square root of the molecular weight of the substance so here we completed about simple diffusion let us begin with the facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion is also called as carrier mediated diffusion because it requires carrier protein for the transport as this carrier transports only one type of substance at a time 
it is also referred as uniport example of facilitated diffusion is transport of glucose by glut glut stands for glucose transporter another example for facilitated diffusion is transport of amino acids glut transporter are present in almost all cells of the body and cause glucose entry into the cell there are about 14 types of glucose transporters and most important out of these are glut 4 which are found on adipose tissues skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles they cause glucose uptake into the cell and their activity is stimulated by insulin insulin increases activity of glut 4 transporters by about 10 to 20 times then glut 2 they are found in renal tubules and intestinal cells whereas glut 1 are present in rbcs now let us understand working mechanism of glut as shown in this diagrammatic representation this is the glucose transporter and here is the binding site for glucose as you might have already noted this protein does not allow glucose to freely enter the cell but Binding of glucose with its binding site initiates conformational change in the carrier protein and now carrier opens on the interior side of the cell once it opens to the interior glucose is released from its binding site and it enters into the intracellular fluid rate of diffusion in facilitated diffusion is determined by number of carrier proteins available for transport number of binding sites on the carrier protein for the substance and the rate of conformational change of the carrier protein concentration gradient also affects rate of facilitated diffusion but only till saturation of carrier protein as you can note in this diagram red color is the relationship between concentration gradient and the rate of facilitated diffusion so initially as the concentration gradient increases rate of facilitated diffusion also increases but after a certain point rate achieves a maximum value and this is called as v max so once all the proteins are saturated with the substance there is no further increase in the rate of diffusion in spite of increase in the concentration gradient so this point is called as v max so same is represented here this is v max now here please clarify your concept in simple diffusion as concentration gradient increases rate of simple diffusion also increases so there is a straight line showing this relationship so there is no v max there is no maximum rate achieved for simple diffusion but for carrier medi mediated diffusion there is v max so let us summarize the important differences between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion simple diffusion does not require carrier protein but facilitated diffusion requires carrier protein rate of diffusion increases with increase in the concentration gradient for simple diffusion whereas in case of facilitated diffusion rate increases initially and then approaches v max competitive inhibition is not present for simple diffusion but it can be seen in case of facilitated diffusion and examples for simple diffusion like dif diffusion of gases diffusion of sodium potassium through their leak channels or the voltage gated channels where in facilitated diffusion example is diffusion of glucose and amino acids so here we have completed about the topic diffusion let us quickly summarize the important points diffusion is passive transport which occurs along the gradient and hence does not require energy simple diffusion can take place directly through the cell membrane if the solute is lipid soluble for water soluble solutes diffusion can occur through leak channels or gated channels important gated channels are voltage gated and ligand gated channels larger water soluble solutes like glucose and amino acids are transported with the help of carrier protein and is known as facilitated diffusion facilitated diffusion attains maximum value called as v max now as you study further you will come across another term called as non ionic diffusion so this is homework for you please find out what is non ionic diffusion where it is present and what is its importance 
so that's all for this topic thank you if you enjoy my sessions press the like button and share it with your friends if you haven't yet subscribed my channel press the subscribe button to get notifications about new releases press bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video